Yeah, I mean, we had a, we, we saw the films being made uh, about the artists, and I mean, you come from the culture, you, you see your uh, women, see all of that, and the other way around, and the, the production doesn't really care, just as I said. And one, how, one time I saw uh, ours, see all of them was uh, torch like the Olympic flames. <laughs> <laughs> we, we tell our stories from an uh, Inuit point of view. <coughs> First screening in Igorik, right after the mix in December 2000, was my scariest moment. Um, then because we finally put it on the table uh, to the people that we are making. Uh, because uh, we had no theaters in a group, and we found the biggest room we could find, which was a gymnasium. Uh, we bought a video projector, a widescreen, uh, we put 400 chairs. Uh, when we opened the gym, kids who were running, pouring in. I mean, they were sitting on the floor. Uh, elders were sitting and people were standing in the back for almost three hours. Uh, sometimes it was fun, sometimes we laughed, then silent again. And when the credits roll, uh, people were cla clapping and crying and shaking our hands. And that day I knew that uh, we did our job right. For, uh, for, for three screenings each night, uh, about 500 people came each night out of uh, 1,200 people. <laughs> you know, he loved it. Uh, kids loved it. And kids were even playing at an hour on the street. <laughs> Every household in Italy had a copy of the video. Uh, other ten other communities uh, we sent uh, the co-op the co stores some um, VHS copies. We made a thousand VHS copies and distributed um, throughout Nunavut. Nunavut doesn't have a theater system. Uh, this was the only uh, the fastest way that uh, they would be left out when we. Uh, launched it. After screening in the Greek, uh, we transferred to 35 millimeter film. Uh, our company, Isuma, took the risk of $100,000, no help from Terrafilm or NFB. Uh, we believe that the outside audience uh, would like the film, but no one else believed in us. First subtitle film print ready to submit to Cannes in March 2001. <coughs> Cannes chose the film and we won the camera door. But we still didn't have any uh, Canadian distributors. <coughs> we won other prizes, Scotland, Belgium, Toronto, nominated for eight genies, uh, Canadian choice for Oscars, CBC and Alliance Atlantis, other just Distributors still dragged their feet. Finally, got CBC and Alliance to sign six months after Cannes. And signed separate deals with UK, France, US, and Netherlands. UK and French release in February 2002. A big success. France sold 250,000 tickets one of the top foreign language films of the year. Canadian release also successful, 1.3 million box office on less than 30 prints. US release started in June, still going on, 23 straight weeks, top six, 60 Northern American films. Sold to other 30 other countries playing now in Australia, New Zealand, Czech Republic, Norway, Denmark, opening in Germany, Russia, and Japan.
first of all, it was a really good film. Exciting, entertaining, action, love, sex, good family work, good music. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> People didn't know, um, didn't believe that uh, these guys don't know what they're doing, but uh, we had professional experience. Abac, Abac had 20 years, I had 20 years, Norman Cohn had 30 years in making professional video before the word digital film got started. Um, legend is a universal story, love, jealousy, murder, revenge, forgiveness, same for everybody, everywhere. Not like Hollywood film, shot, acted, edited in our own style, Everything authentic, audience really get the story. People seem to want different points of views, different way of seeing. Same old stereotypes about native people seem fake and boring to audience. Yeah, that's about that. <laughs> talk about uh, a little bit about uh, what I'm working on right now you know what we are working on right now right now uh, we are working on a uh, short documentary on shamanism and Christianity because um, uh, when Christianity came uh, uh, we were taught to uh, forget your old way of life become new uh, <laughs> And we started to realize uh, our young people growing up, uh, they thought that square dancing was an Indian culture thing. It was <laughs> 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 just the way we that brought it. Uh, I'm um, just, uh, we're just waking up, we're just trying to wake up uh, audience and get the story right. Uh, how has Native filmmaking changed in the past 20 years? Hasn't changed much. Um, IBC is still the same, probably disappeared more. Uh, um, if, it, if it weren't for us, uh, I don't know. I have. I have absolutely no idea how it would be today. Absolutely no idea. Uh, CBC is the main uh, broadcaster in radio up in the north. Uh, broadcast in Institute. Uh, but there seems to be nothing uh, Nothing, and you don't work for the corporation, there's hardly anything for our use. Um, IBC ratings have gone down a lot, uh, and also since uh, this new uh, Aboriginal television net work network uh, started, um, Inuit and politicians and critics seem kept saying on over the radio that uh, what happened to us, uh, where is any problem? Uh, it is in APTN, but uh, nobody <laughs> probably doesn't know their time slots. Uh, um, in 1982, 84, when broadcasting started out, um, there was a whole bunch of us. And uh, that uh, we thought, oh, it was great for a new broadcasting corporation, and I would give my uh, left arm for it. And I went to work with uh, uh, eight years working there, uh, I couldn't do it. Uh, then when we started, there were very promising uh, filmmakers, uh, which we got the message that uh, once we started to learn that um, 
one day we're going to be director of the corporation. You know, that never happened. That uh, stayed in Ottawa. It has never changed. Um, so a lot of us uh, promising starters uh, went to work somewhere else. Uh, that's very sad for me. I guess I'm there. But um, as being a f uh, filmmaker in Canada, especially uh, <laughs> being way up there, um, when you try your first attempt and it was not fair uh, in 1995 when we went after funding as Canadians, as taxpaying Canadians. Uh, which thought that we would be treated uh, the same everywhere because we were part of Canada. Um, it was a shocking experience to find, and I hope we never have to go through that again. Amen. Um, <laughs> from the audience. Now I have two excellent uh, volunteers who will be pleased to move the microphone to wherever you would like to, to be. <coughs> we have, yes, down in front. Please introduce yourself and state your question. Hi, my name is Allison and my question has to do with distribution. And I was just wondering if, uh, Zacharias, you had any hope for the distribution of the film to happen prior to, in Canada, prior to the release, you know, at the Vancouver Film Festival when I first saw the film, or what happened in Long that Path. Question about distribution. terrible in this field. Um, I'm good at making it. Uh, <laughs> distribution is one uh, another thing. Uh, it's job description. Um, I know that uh, after uh, talking for one year and promoting this film and trying to watch your sale agents, it's a very corrupt system. Um, I would stick to making movies, not just to use me. Another reason why we, uh, our company started our own distribution, because you watch, you got to watch those wops out there. <laughs> There's a lot of them. <laughs> about the documentary about shamanism and Christianity that you were mentioning and wondering uh, where you're at in the production of that and how we might get access to, to Okay, um, uh, we're still in the editing stage. We already shot it. Um, uh, since uh, Christianity came up north, uh, they used uh, shamanism as an opposition uh, made it really look bad, but uh, um, and also 
young people aren't that interested in this subject, and it, the subject is close because uh, religion is uh, Catholic, and then Anglicans run uh, the subject. Uh, three years ago, uh, it was almost banned to tell stories. What well, to do even the drum dance? Uh, but now it's slowly uh, coming back. It's still a very touchy subject, but uh, the only way um, I'm doing my part to try to bring it back is through TV, uh, interview the elders and how and our uh, elders are telling me that it was not all bad. It was, some of it was good. Some of them saved lives and helped the sick, and, and they were telling me, and I started to realize that uh, Shannon used to kill uh, evil spirits, and that evil spirit that made people sick or lizard or something evil. And they used to kill them. But since a hundred years, uh, we haven't touched them. Uh, and they were saying that the longer they are here, the smarter they are, harder to kill. So then I thought, we got a lot of overtime to do. I just wonder if there were any other practical considerations of filming in the Arctic that are not the same as we would have here. You mentioned hunting instead of, or having to hire hunters to feed the crew rather than having the big trucks or catering. Were there any other things that were different and unusual challenges for you?